You stay in bed for 33% of your life, that is like 8 hours a day. Sounds about right. Similarly, as a developer, you spend a lot of time inside your terminal, looking at your terminal, playing around with commands and so on. If you spend 33% of your life sleeping, you want to make sure that your bed is comfortable. Then why not your terminal? I see so many people working with a terminal which looks like this. So let's set this up correctly today. We're gonna set up your terminal, which is gonna be ultimate developer experience for you as you work more and more with your terminal and commands, which will make it much easy on your eyes to see the screen. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to download something known as item two. Now this item two is a altogether different terminal application, which does not ship with your operating system. And why we are bringing it? Well, it got it has got multiple features, but my favorite one is the ability to have multiple tabs and split screen with a single keyboard shortcut. It's just a lifesaver when you are trying to run a lot of commands together, but you don't really want to have different tabs or different windows, basically for every single process. Huge disclaimer, this item to terminal is available only for Mac OS, but wait, if you're on Linux, Ubuntu, anything, any sort of variant of Linux, don't worry, you got Telex. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's the like very close alternative to what item 2 is. So go ahead and set that up instead of item 2. So let's just go ahead and download item 2 by visiting item2.com. You're going to find all the links in the description. Go to the download section and click on the latest stable release. It's going to download a zip file which when you extract will give you a single binary of item to application. You just have to drag and drop this into your applications folder and you'll be done. Now obviously I will skip this because I already have item to installed but you might want to just drag and drop it. Now you can go ahead and use spotlight to open item or any other software which you're using and you'll be probably not presented to a screen like this. You'll still see an ugly screen as far as I remember. So stick with me and let's see how we can convert this into the setup which looks like mine. All right, so the next steps are following this URL. First of all, link is in the description and following along with me. There is a bunch of changes in the setting, but at the end of the day, you're going to end up with pretty much the setup which I have at the moment, right? So if I go to any directory, something like which is a project, we get a nice little interface for us. So anyway, Let's go ahead and visit this URL and uh, we're going to start off with the installation steps, which is right here. Now we already have item to install. If you have Brew and do you not prefer to download it directly, then you can obviously go ahead and install it like this way, but we have already downloaded, so you should be fine. Next up is pick up a theme, Solarize Dark or Light. This is not a, really a theme, but a color preset of the theme. So just go ahead and open this and you're going to have a file like this. Just go ahead and save it. Don't try to read it right now. We're going to edit. We're going to modify it later on. But for now, it's fine. So you can just save it with the same name. Make sure it ends with item colors and not .txt because then you're going to have a little bit of problems. So just remove the .txt extension at the end. Hit save. Replace. And there we go. Right? And I have no idea like why does it still save with .txt. Anyway, so once you do that, go back to your item setup and obviously your item is still looking ugly so don't worry about that press command comma or you can go ahead into item 2 and preferences right then this little guy is going to come up go to profiles go to colors and click on color presets and import now you can select and i knew that this was supposed to be saved as item colors And I have no idea like why Mac is screwing up with me this time. So I'm just gonna manually go ahead and inside finder, replace it. All right, so I did it. And now if we go ahead and import, and there we go, we have item color file, open it. And it obviously says that the color scheme is same as that because I've already added it. So I'm just gonna add it anyway, right? So you can see we have a solarized dark patched color. So if I click on this, 
Now my color preset, my color template is basically that thing. Now you might have seen that I had dark background initially because I have customized a couple of colors here and there. So that is why I created a custom preset. But for the most part, you're going to be good enough starting off just with the item 2. This is like the solarized dark preset by default. So there's your preset, there's your color being done. Next up is you have to go back and continue with the tutorial. So next up, what you have to do is install Oh My ZSH. Now it's just like putting your shell on steroids. What this is, it's basically a wrapper around ZSH and ZSH is a shell just like Bash, right? So for the most part, you don't have to worry about learning ZSH custom specific commands because they share a lot of similar commands like CD, LS, all that stuff which you're going to use day to day. But ZSH will have additional and different behavior in some cases. So you might have to look for that if you are a power bash user. But for the most people who are watching this video, this should have no impact. Now you can just blindly go ahead and trust this because I mean, you can just make sure that this link is same, right? And the contents, if you want, you can inspect them because that's always a good thing. But for the most part, I would say that this content is safe. So you can go ahead and copy this command right here inside your shell. This is gonna create, this is gonna install this oh my ZSH tooling into your system and we'll set it up. So once you have installed oh my ZSH, you could really just go ahead and CD into a directory called ZSH, nope, not this one, oh my ZSH, right? And when you, once you LS into this, you're gonna see some things like this, right? Now this would get populated sooner or later once you're adding and removing plugins and templates, but this themes folder should be available by default. And if you LS into this, you're gonna see a lot of themes by default, right? I have not downloaded this myself. They come with oh my ZSH. So these are all the themes which you can technically try, but I would just recommend, you know, just sticking up with the ones which I'm telling you in this video, because I guess that's why you are here, right? So the next thing is just going ahead and editing your ZSH RC file. This is the file which is going to contain the actual crux of your themes. Which themes would you want to use? How your terminal prompt looks? All that stuff. So this is interesting to me because this is the point where you might want to deviate from my setup. Because if I go ahead and show you how my setup looks like, this is how it looks like, right? This is my prompt basically username then the directory and then the master branch or any sort of git branch if i'm in a git based repository right so you might want to have a theme like power level 9k or 10k which comes with all these icons and you know all the status as well but personally i did not like it I, but personally i just like my terminal super clean with you know the benefits of having a nice look as well so i stick with the default theme which is the agnostic theme i guess but i just modified it to include this sort of um you know triangle because it kind of looked cool on your username by default so i'm just going to show you how to do that so your zsrc file should look something like this firstly just add your zsh underscore theme variable as agnostic this is assuming you're sticking with me if not you can follow along with the guidelines right here so next up is you want to customize your prompt and your prompt is basically how this thing looks, right? So this is basically how your prompt is looking. So this is this is basically some doofy thing, but uh, I got this working very long back. So this is how you have to customize it, write it in order to get what you want, right? So I'm just going to leave this piece of string as well in the description. So just copy and paste this prompt context function. This would be in the description as a gist or something and you should be good to go. Finally, to add syntax highlighting to your terminal, that is, if you write the right command or something which is available on your system, it should be green. If not, it should be red. If you want to get this behavior right here, then you gotta have add ZSH syntax highlighting. For this, you have to first of all install it using brew. So if we go back to the link and go down, you're gonna see we get this command called brew install ZSH. And then you have to copy paste the source line into your ZSH file, just like you can see in my case. So once you do these two steps, make sure you do them correctly. You should have 
your syntax highlighting up and ready. And last but not the least, you have to download Source Code Pro. Just go ahead and click on it and uh, just click on download right here. We're just gonna download a Source Code Pro ODF file. Just click on it to install it. Once you do that, go back to your terminal, go to profile, go to text, and just select the font as Source Code Pro. Once you do that, you should be good to go. After doing this, just go ahead and quit your terminal completely and restart it. And this time, when you, once you open it, you're gonna be facing with a brand new experience for your whole terminal. Now you can just go ahead and open preferences, profiles, and you know, select the correct profile and colors. And you know, if you have the same solarized color dark preset, you can go ahead and select your colors manually if you want to customize some colors here and there. I actually would like to customize this a little bit, but it's again up to you if you want to do it or not. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you were able to set up your terminal correctly, let me know in the comments below. If not, let's discuss what went wrong. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one.